The Roman Empire. Something we all think about at any moment of our lives. If the meme is to be believed, at least. I do. That meme applies to me. I mean, look at them. Look how cool they are. Look how happy this guy is. Known for their culture and innovations, this guy, its military campaigns, and of course, the legions. Within said legions, you have all kinds of soldiers. There's the legionaries, the auxilia, and there's also the thing that today's mech is named after. The Centurion. The trebuchet was a mech designed from the ground up as a mech that is most optimized for lance operations, as opposed to being able to function by itself. I mean, it can, you know, operate on its own, but, you know, it won't be as good. To pair up with it, Korean? Chorian. Korean. Enterprises designed and produced the Centurion as an operating partner. Entering production in the year 2801, this mech was born straight into the First Succession War. With Korean enterprises being based primarily within the Federated Suns, most Centurions in the entire known space are found within the armed forces of the Federated Suns, the AFFS. They do exist elsewhere, like the Free Wars League, because they have factories there too, but it's mainly within the uh, AFFS, the Davions, where the Centurion can be founded. So, the Centurion is a 50-tonner medium mech. Looks-wise, well, it looks like its namesake, the Centurion. Except for the plume, or the fin of the mech is, is longitudinal, not transversal, like the actual like Centurion. I would put a shelf of Centurion with one, but, uh, <laughs> no. You can use your imagination. <laughs> the one in my mind, at this exact moment as I'm writing this part of the script, Looks very weird, actually. <laughs> but anyway, on the video game models, the mech looks a bit more sharper compared to the latest drawings. And uh, it also has like an extra fin on the left shoulder. I'm not entirely sure what that is for. It could be some form of head armor, but why only one side? Some of the uh, the older drawings, they do have like different shoulder designs on each side. Like one, one side has more rounded or the other side has more longer. They got like asymmetrical like shoulder pads basically. Some of them, not all of them. But anyway, uh, also on the game model, right? They like the left arm. There's some. It's got some kind of like a shield or something on the uh, the forearm there. I don't know if it's functional or not, but uh, it's there, I guess. Anyway, as stated just now, it's a 50 tonner. The chassis is a Korean model K7. It is powered by a Nissan 200 engine that can propel it. To a maximum speed of 64 kilometers per hour. The standard armor for the Centurion is uh, 8.5 tons of Stargard 3 and its standard heatsink count and type are 10 single heatsinks. Its communication targeting systems are also both from uh, Korean and they are the Transband J9 and the BTEC. The BTEC targeting system gives the mech a positive quirk. Uh, this mech has improved short targeting, which gives you a bonus for shooting close range, obviously. But the mech uses non-standard parts, which means you get penalty to find parts for the mech. Parts, I'm gonna go into now. Well, I mean, technically, there's only one part, which is the Luxor D-Series AC-10. This specific model has a problematic and also a uh, proprietary loading mechanism, so you could only get replacements from this one factory on Raman 2 which later got destroyed in the year 2845. Smack dab in the middle of the Second Succession War, so, you know, you're in the middle of a big war, factory that make these parts gets destroyed. Not a good time. <laughs> now you probably think, why not just change the gun? Well, that's the thing. The right arm of the mech is specifically designed around that gun. So you can't just switch it out. If you want to switch it out, you got to do some modifications to the to the arm chassis, I guess, to that arm frame, which takes some time. This actually made the AFFS to really consider completely replacing Centurion with another mech model. We'll go on this later on. So the gun being proprietary in universe, you know, it's hard source in universe, but in game, now I don't really know how this negative quirk like affects this mech, like like like. Does it only affect this gun or does it affect the entire mech? I'm not entirely sure. 
I guess it could possibly up, be up to your campaign GM, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. But the other weapons, you know, they don't have the same problems as the AC-10. The Luxar LRM-10 and the two Phototech 806C medium lasers are completely and assumed to be, you know, standard parts. And you can just switch out for any other brands if you want, I suppose. Overall, the standard weapon Centurion is equipped with makes it pretty universal in terms of its combat capabilities. Just like a certain other mech. Then again, that mech came after this one, so I guess the Centurion is the certain other mech. But, okay, I think it's time to get to the meaty part. The variants. As per usual, we'll start with the earliest one, the CN9A, which was the one introduced in 2801. This was what was just described uh, just now with the Luxar AC-10 on the right arm with 20 shots in the torso, right torso. The Luxar LRM-10 on the left torso with 24 shots stored in the same place in the right torso. And the two phototech mediums in the middle with one of them pointing backwards. It's got 8.4 tons of armor and has 10 singles which is enough if you don't alpha strike all the time which I personally do. This one costs 3.4 million. Next, we have the CN9AH, or AH, which was introduced in 2874. It took them seven decades to make a different variant. Now, I don't know if that's a testament on how good the initial design is, which arguably has a pretty major problem with its gun being, you know, stupid. Or they just couldn't be bothered to make a new one, I don't know. But they did change the AC-10 to a different one. A Luxor DDX. 5 AC-20 with 10 shots. It's a bigger gun. The mediums were removed, the, the ones in the middle, and everything else is the same. And then the LRMs and the armor and the uh, heat sink count. I guess it gets its name from the sound people make when they get shot by an AC-20. This one costs 3.5 million. Then we have the CN9AL. This one made its debut in the year 2915. This one's 16 single heat sinks with 11 tons of armor. The additional heat sinks were installed to accommodate two extra weapons they added, both located on the right arm. They put an Anx large laser and a small laser there too. This one will cost you 3.3 million. Then we have the CN9D, a new letter. This one was created over a century later in 3049. That's a very long time to stick to one model. Guess it is a good base, huh? <laughs> Around this time, the AFFS really was close to replacing the Centurion with another model. This is this is what I mentioned before, where they almost replaced the a Centurion. But Korean Enterprises, with the help of the uh, NAIS, the New Avalon uh, Institute of Science, managed to convince uh, them otherwise. So they built a new factory at the capital, New Avalon, and worked closely with the institute, the Science Institute, to make the next upgrade. To help with quickly spreading and also keeping up with the man of the model, I guess, of, of Centurion, Korean gave another company, Jellstar Aerospace, a license to produce the uh, Centurion. The CN9D comes stock with the Korean model KL77 Endosteel chassis and a new GM300XL engine that propels this thing to 97 kilometers per hour. That's a pretty quick boy, huh? Heat sink and armor tonnage remain the same at 10 and 8.5 tons. You get a new Mydron XL LBX-10 with 10 shots of cluster and 10 shots of slug stored inside case. On the left torso, an Artemis fire control system guides the uh, Luxor 33R LRM-10, you know, the, the same one, 24 shots. And the uh, two photo tank mediums are still there in the middle, one pointing backwards, of course. Now, according to Mac HQ, right, this one still has, this one and, you know, future variants, they still have the non-standard parts quirk. I don't know if that's just an overlook, overlook, like, thing that they carry over, or is it like the entire mech model has some other proprietary parts that that's also hard to get, I suppose. But I'm leaning more towards to the uh, former, though, because the D is Korean's attempt to make the mech less of a hassle to work on. So yeah, it's probably just an overlooked thing maybe? Hopefully? We might get a rata to fix this. I don't know. But anyway, this uh, variant costs 9.6 million. Then you got a D3 sub variant. 
Or at least I consider it a side variant because it's identical to the D. Except for the, an addition of a, a triple strength my armor system that can boost uh, the mech up to 118 kilometers per hour when it's active. This one was introduced in 3052 and it costs 10.7 million. Now, the keen eyed amongst you may have noticed that this is the third D and not the second. Where's the D2? I don't know. Maybe it's a failed prototype or something. I don't know. Maybe they'll introduce it down the line. Who knows? It doesn't say anywhere. And now we have a proper next generation, I suppose, the CN10B. This one was made in 3057 to be uh, able to better withstand the clan forces. So this one's created during the uh, clan invasion. This one could technically be considered a, a separate model because it is actually heavier than the CN9. At 55 tons, it's 5 tons heavier. It features a modified endo steel chassis from the CN9D with a different engine, the DAV220, which gives the same top speed as the original 9, the 64 km uh, top speed. The reinforced frame allows the mech to carry 11.5 uh, tons of armor. And this model is often called the armored up variant of the CN9D because weapons wise, it is basically the same except for the rear laser which they removed and replaced it with a Sotel precision line medium pulse laser also since this was uh, since this next thing was specifically mentioned in a TRO I'm gonna mention it here too the mech looks identical to the CN9D to confuse clan forces you know Got two same looking things but one's harder to kill hmm. <laughs> this one costs 5.1 million I just noticed it's a lot cheaper than, than the 10 and 90. But anyway, uh, the B, t uh, the 10 B has a sub variant called the 10 J. J stands for jumper. A name like that, you can probably guess this one has jump jets installed. They reduce the armor to 9.5 tons to install four jump jets in the legs. This mag is able to jump uh, about 120 meters. Everything else, but this one is identical to the B. This one costs 5.4 million. There's also another sub variant called the W. The W swaps out the two mediums in the middle for a PPC on the left torso and three extra heat sinks. To create space for the PPC, the armor was reduced to 9.5 tons and an XL engine was installed. The W is effectively a sniper variant for the 10 series. This one costs about 9 million. Some extra lore about it, the W didn't last long, the W line didn't last long with, with the AFFS because of the cost. It's 9 million, but then again, the 9D was also 9 million. But whatever, uh, yeah, the, the, this line didn't last long and they were replaced with normal like Ds later on. Speaking of the D, we return back to it. The CN9D3D was introduced in 3060. It comes with the same chassis as a, as a 9D. Uh, but a different engine, a Velar 300XL engine. So instead of a uh, TSM system, like the 3D, or the D3 even, the 3D3 has MACS, Mimir Accelerator, I forgot what S means, circuit. <laughs> it's basically an adrenaline shot. <clears throat> it boosts, the uh, it trampoline boosts the mech up to, uh, it can boost up this mech to 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, this mech is covered with uh, 8 tons of ferrofibrous armor. It has 3 weapons, a light gauss rifle with 36 shots on the right arm, an ER medium on the right torso, and an LRM-10 with 12 shots in the left torso. This one costs 10.6 million. Two years later, they made a D5. This one also has the MASC system installed. It uses 9.5 tons of standard armor, and the heat 10 heat sinks were upgraded to double heat sinks. The right arm is equipped with a rotary AC5 with 60 shots stored inside case in the right torso. Its secondary weapons are just two ER mediums in the middle, both facing forwards. The LRM10 is removed in favor of a targeting computer in the left torso. In addition to the targeting computer, the mech is also equipped with a C3 slave receiver in the head. This one, the D5, costs 11 million. The next one has two introductory dates. 3065 according to Mega Mech and 3076 according to Sarna. I don't know, I don't know where these two dates come from since the site for Sarna comes from a record sheet. Well, the Mega Mech one apparently is from TRO uh, 3050, but I can't find a specific date anyway. So who knows w when this one was introduced? 
between those two dates, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, the CN9DA, small a, is a steel refit of the original D. It replaces the LBX10 with an AC5 with 40 shots. They also install a target computer on the left torso. As a full unit, you know, if you were to, if, if this was available to buy from a factory, it should cost about 9.2 million. Then we have the CN9D4D, introduced in 3066. It's basically the 3D3 or the D3D. God, this, the, the, the naming is <laughs> messes you up, man. With only 16 shots for the Gauss rifle, and the LRM10 is replaced with an Artemis uh, for LRM15 with 16 shots. The engine has also been changed to a smaller model, a model that only pushes the mech uh, to a top speed of uh, 86 km per hour. About 108 km per hour with uh, MAC activated. This one costs 9.7 million. Alright, then we skip a lot of numbers. 6, 7, 8 don't exist. The 9 exists. The D9, yes. <laughs> this one was built by Jellstar Aerospace in 3071. So Jellstar Aerospace, I mentioned just now. Uh, during the uh, the D, where uh, Korean they gave the company a license to build to produce the uh, what do you call it the Centurion and produce they did and they also made their own variant the D9. The D9 uses the D5 as its base. It's equipped the latest technologies of the time, like nine tons of uh, ferrofibrous li of light ferrofibrous armor even, and a compact gyro with a targeting computer and C3 removed. The XL engine and 10 double heat sinks remain the same, with an addition of uh, 6 jump jets. 3 on each side of the torso. These jets have a distance of uh, 180 meters. For weapons, an LRM-10 with Aramis is put back in place on the left torso of 24 shots. The right arm carries a plasma rifle with 20 shots. And all the ammo for the, uh, for the what do you call that, for the LRM at least, because plasma ammo it don't blow up. The LRM does. LRM, LRM do. LRM ammo do. They do blow up. Blew up. English, not my first language. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they are stored inside a yeah, case compartment in the right torso. Now, apparently, armor and jump jacks make the mech look very different to the point where people thought this was like a new model, not a Centurion variant, like a straight new model. It's not. It's a D9, and it costs 11.6. Now we get to the next 9 series model, which is just a field refit of the original 9A. Appearing in the year 3072, the CN9AR, small r, takes the original A and gives it two PPCs on the right arm, one heavy and one light. The LRM10 remains, but the rear medium is replaced with Pulse 1. To cool the new energy weapons, 10 double heat sinks were installed. Everything else is the same. As a full unit, if you were to buy this from a factory, it should cost around 3.8 million. Alright, so this next one, this next line, is probably my favorite. Not because it's like the best or anything, but because, but just like the idea of it. So you know when you buy a car, right, you get like different trim levels, right? You get the, uh, you get the complete high level, you get the mid trim, where you get some of the luxuries and or performance of the high trim. And then you get the lowest trim, or as some people where I live call it, the tin can trim. Where it's literally just a car to go to, to get you from A to B, right? The H line of Centurion is basically that. A line of mechs for forces that, are, that just need something that's barely good enough for defense. And maybe very limited offensive purposes. I just like things like this. Not something like cheap that anyone can buy. And then they can just like work with it. You know, just build it up over time. And it's like, it's like modding a car, you know? An old car, and you buy an old car, and then you like mod it you know, to make it like a sleeper or like a supercar destroyer. You know, it's, I just love this stuff. It's awesome. It's awesome. But anyway, uh, the CN9H was the brainchild of one Franz Zimmermann of the Marian hegemony, a periphery state that took the title of this video quite literally, because they are basically space Romans, except they're blue. How sippy I, baby. But anyway, uh, the Marians, they built their uh, first uh, mech factory in the year 3077. That's operated by uh, Marian Arms Incorporated. And produced this thing with the help of Alpha Trading Corporation. Now, with them still being new to the whole mech production thing, like the H was a very simple design. 
built using primitive technologies. The H is powered by a primitive 240 engine that's capable of pushing the mech to the same top speed as the normal Centurion at 64 kilometers. It comes with 9 tons of primitive armor and the cockpit is also primitive design, lacking advanced sensors and even an injection seat. Its weapons are of modern designs, however, you know, likely imported from neighboring nations. The right arm is equipped with an LBX-10 with 10 slugs and 10 clusters, all stored in the right arm. So it's just like the right arm is the gun, the ammo and everything. So if that blows up, at least you still have, you, you, you won't die, I guess. <laughs> uh, in the middle, you get a single medium laser. And on the left torso, instead of the LRM-10, like the original Centurion, the H is equipped with five rocket launcher tents. So you get five shots and each shot fires 10 rockets. Heat sink count is the same at uh, 10, 10 singles. And this one, the H, costs 3.7 million. However, it should be noted that the H is only available to the Marian Legion. So you can't really buy it if you're like a mercenary or like a, like a, like a, like a poor periphery nation or poor nation somewhere that just wants a PDF mech, you know? You can't buy it unless you're part of the Legion. Join the Legion. When Marion Arms was finally experienced enough with you know, mech construction, they produced the H line for uh, 30 years at this point with this next mech, I guess, because this, ne this next mech uh, first appeared in the year uh, 30, uh, 3100. 3100. But yeah, this next one is the uh, next generation of the H series, the CN9H2 Militia Mech. The H2 is built upon the Marion Arms KA7 chassis, which is actually an industrial mech chassis. It is powered by the same Nissan 200 engine as the original uh, Centurion. The cockpit is a modified industrial cockpit with advanced fire control systems integrated in it. The uh, bec Because it's like an industrial grade cockpit though, the mech is not in environmentally sealed, so you can't really pilot this thing. In hostile developments, uh, environments even, you know, you can't go to space with it. I mean, you can probably go to like a toxic planet as long as you, you as, as if, if you yourself are wearing like a hazmat suit with a separate thing, I guess. It's, it's probably not going to be like the most effective way, but it's the only way <laughs> if you're deploying this at a very, very bad spot. But anyway, uh, keeping up the whole industrial thing, the mech is armored with nine tons of industrial armor. Which, unsurprisingly, isn't you know, good for combat. You know, because it's not made for combat. Game-wise, though, I think, uh, what do you call that? Industrial armor has the same, like, same properties as primitive armor, if I'm not mistaken. Weapons are the same as the H, except for an additional rear medium. So you got, you know, you got the, uh, the LBX-10, you got a medium laser in the middle, and also a new one at the rear, and also you get the, uh, five... Rocket tens. This one is cheaper actually than the uh, original H by one million. This one costs two point seven million. H two can be bought by other groups. They can you, know, you can buy it, but you have to be like a military group. I don't know if like a mercenary or a planetary militia group counts as a military group, but I mean, it makes sense that they do, right? Hopefully they do, so that these. Poor boys at, at these backwater planets can defend themselves. God, I just love this thing. I just love the idea of it. I really do. Anyway, uh, next is a further refinement of the H model. The H2H, which is just a H2 with uh, in heavy industrial armor, which is somewhat su uh, on par with standard armor in terms of protection. And then in that, uh, they managed to install an ejection seat into the cockpit. So, you know, you, 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 can, you, can, you can fly out. Yeah, you can fly out if the mech goes down, at least. It still can't enter hostile environments, though, and the weapons remain the same. This one will cost you 2.8 million. It's slightly more expensive. And now we come to the latest H model, the H3 or H3H. In the Irregulars TRO, I'm not sure which one it is. In 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 the TRO, it's called the H3H, and, and everywhere else it's called H3. So I don't know if the, if the TRO is talking about a different model or... They're talking about the same model. Hopefully they are. I didn't miss one. I mean, there's there's only one H3 in, in uh, Mega Mech, so... It's probably the same thing, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's also introduced the same year, in uh, 3100. 
The H3 mounts 7 point tons of Lorica Progressia Ferro Fibrous Armor. So this was probably like the most best like armored, uh, best protected uh, H model. They remove on the mediums and replace the LBX uh, 10 with an Ultra AC 10 with 20 shots. Everything else is the same as H2H. The H3 causes about 3 million. Like, I'm not kidding, dude. The H line really makes me want to start another campaign in Mac HQ where I play as like a security force or something. Or for like a very, very small periphery nation or like an independent world or something. You know? Just, or, you know, just play like a local defensive militia against pirates or the occasional raid from uh, major nations or something. It's, it's just so cool. I want to see what happens. I want to see what I can build my force up to. Maybe I can become like a prop military force or something. I wish you can like capture planets in that game. That'd be so fun though. If you can capture planets. But I think it messes with the coding or something. I think you used to be able to do that. You can like use GM mode to change a planet's allegiance or something. But they got rid of it because... I don't know why actually. I've never... I've never really tried that before. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I I I really like the idea of mechs like this, and I really want to see more of it. Like I really do. It, like it's awesome. I know I know there are a lot more militia mechs out there, but I just want to see something like this. You know, they take like a like a like a like a like a normal bell mech, but they like make like a lower grade version of it. It's awesome. I love it. But anyway, uh, let's end off the variant section with the uh, latest Centurion model, the CN10D. So, by the time of its introduction in 3121, so 21 years later from the you know, H-Line, most original Centurions were being phased out for the newer Omni Centurion. The D is designed to be a lower cost alternative, so it's basically the Davion's like H variant, I guess, in a way. Uh, something to give you know, the lower class units, well, you know, the more important units, I guess, they get the Omni Centurion. Using the original B as a base, the 10B, the D mounts a light engine that gives the mech the same top speed as 64. A compact gyro is installed and 11 tons of, ar of uh, light ferrofibrous armor covers the mech. An Artemis LRM-10 on the left torso, 24 shots, uh, and a uh, LBX-10 of 10 slugs and 10 clusters all stored in case 2 compartment in the right torso. And in the middle, you get a light PPC and an ER medium on the back. To cool all this, the mech is equipped with 10 double heat sinks. The latest Centurion will cost you 9.8 million. Now, I just mentioned the uh, the CN11 Omni Centurion. I'm not going to include it in this video because technically it is... No, it's not technically. It is actually considered a different, separate mech. So, you know, maybe I'll do a quick video overview of it. There's not a lot of lore. I've, I've skimmed through the uh, starter page and doesn't seem to be a lot of lore. So um, I might make like a separate like video tab where it's like just a quick, uh, you know, quick lore overview of something that's less, uh, less popular, I guess, less expanded on. There's also the, the Legionnaire, which is basically a modified CN11. So you know how the Vindicator's got a snake, right? Where they, they change things up a bit and they get a snake. It's something like that. I mean, the Legionnaire isn't a anti anti like ba mech but you know the the the, the uh, what do you call it the, the 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 production how they were researched and built this how they did research and built this thing is basically the same you know they, they, they took a centurion mess things around a bit and you know call it a different mech i hope the mariners get get the hands on one of these legionnaires actually so they can have like a proper roman legion mech force <laughs> centurions and you know uh, legionnaires that'd be cool That'd be awesome. Hell, they probably make like their own H version as well, you know, like the cheap, like a cheaper version. That'd be so cool, dude. I want to see more of the H, man. I really do. So fun. But anyway, uh, let's go to the less cannon variants. You know, the up acro viral, whatever it's called, less cannon. You, know, you don't know if this is this is cannon or not variants, and then we'll move on to customs. So first, we got the CN9P from MW5. This is just like the Atlas P and the Vindicator P in previous videos where I mentioned. In the Call to Arms DLCs, they added a bunch of like melee mechs, melee, uh, melee oriented variants of the mechs, I guess. A lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them's got, uh, what do you call that? The P, 
treatment, I guess. Introduced in 3027, this one mounts an AC-10 on the right arm with 20 shots, single medium in the middle. The LRM-10 is switched out for a LRM-5 with 48 shots so that they can carry a mace on the left arm. Then from NWO, you have the CN90N Legend Mech. This one is another melee version, which is kind of weird because you can't melee in MWO. I don't know if this is how it actually looks like or is it like just a skin you get, you can put on, but goddamn, it's bright. <laughs> I like the shield though, it's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, you get an LBX10 and a uh, snub nose PPC on the right arm and another snap nose in the middle and also you know the shield it also provides extra protection i can't really preview this mech in nwos so i don't know if there's anything else about it <laughs> i can only see pictures of it <laughs> so that leaves us with the canon customs we have four and they're all the same mech here be the cn9 ylw yen lo wang named after like i think like a chinese god or something i forgot this solaris mic is just a cn9a with pontiac 100 ac20 on the right arm with 15 shots they had to remove the lrm as well to uh, accommodate this weapon the uh middle lasers are still there you know, one in front and one in the uh, rear and the left arm has a uh, weapon attached to it. It's like a spike knuckle duster thingy. But in Mega Man, in some official art, it holds a hatch instead. Might be a little variance though. <laughs> but no, in Mega Man, it, it, it does hold a hatchet. I'm not sure. Yeah, it could be like a game limitation or something. The next one again is the same mech. But it's like a... It's a custom... It, it was further customized by Justin Sun, Kai Alit Lau. The CN9... YLW2 Yen Lo Wang switches the engine for an XL1. On the right arm, you get a Gauss rifle, 16 shots. There are two medium pulses on the left arm, and also a hatchet. In the middle, there's only one uh, medium pulse pointing backwards. The mech is also equipped with a uh, triple strength mirror. And finally, we have the CN9 YLW3 Yen Lo Wang. This was the mech Kai piloted before his death during the Capellan Crusades. The Gauss rifle has been changed to a clan model. A clan LRM-20 is installed on the left torso of 12 shots inside a clan case compartment, case 2 compartment. The rear medium pulse is now a clan ER, and the uh, 10 heat sinks are now double models, and the armor is 9 tons of light ferrofabris. So after his death, right, his mech was passed to his great niece, Danai Lao Centrella. Now, technically, the CN9 YLW4 doesn't officially exist, I guess, in the record, but it is described in a dossier. Like the mech is described, the mech is described, but it's not called the Yen Lo Wan, Yen, the, 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 the fourth version of this mech, I guess. But I'm gonna call it the fourth one because. It's, it's a further upgrade, basically, of the same thing. The mech now has an endo steel chassis, the Korean model K77, and also has a Velar 300XL engine. On the right arm, that you get a Series 4D2 heavy large laser. On the left torso, you get a Type 20 longbow LRM20 with Artemis. And you also get a hatchet and shield as well if uh, with uh, triple strength. Apparently, there's also clan tech in it, but we have no idea which parts are clan or not. Well, I guess it's time to move on to the pilots. There aren't a lot, but some of them have a lot of lore. But again, and I'm not going to go too deep into them. This is a mech video, not a character video. Uh, let's start with the uh, ones we just mentioned. Justin Zhang Allard is a James Bond absolute super spy of a man. He started his career as a Davion Mac warrior. Then he was accused of treason and got exiled, so he went on to become a Solaris fighter. That's where he got his legendary mech. Justin would dedicate his victories to the Capellans, and then later on, they recruited him into the Maskarovka. This was all some very, very deep cover BS to save another deep cover agent that was already there. 
Now, after the mission was done, he and Candace Lau, they, they both fell in love when he was being, he was sneaking around being a Davion Glowy, ran off to the St. Ives Compact where they had a family and some kids. One of them being Kai Alet Lau. Kai is regarded as one of the best mech warriors ever. Just like his father, he started out as a Davion or Steiner or by this time it was the Fed Federation Commonwealth, I guess it was both. Uh, Davion Steiner, Mech Warrior. He had a very successful career. He did in the military. Oh, yes. He single-handedly single destroyed a uh, Falcon Guard unit by blowing up his hatchet men, which caused an, a, a landslide that basically buried all the uh, guards alive, basically. <laughs> After getting back home, he found out his dad, his father, Justin, was assassinated by Romano Lau. And then he went to Solaris to become champ champion for two years. I don't know why. His father died and just went to Solaris for some reason. It doesn't exactly say. <laughs> the Solaris guidebook uh, says something about him taking over like his dad's stable, and that's it really. Uh, I don't know. That's it. He just, he just, he just his dad died, and he was like, "I'm taking over stable." I'm sure that's something else I'm missing, but <laughs> that's all I could find. On my uh, research, I guess. How deep is my research? Well, that's up for you to judge. If I my research is bad, tell me, <laughs> so I can up it up, I guess. But anyway, after becoming champion two years, he went back to fight the clans before the Capellans invaded uh, Saint the Saint Ive Compact. You know? He went back home to the Compact. That's where he was born, right? And you know, he you know, to defend it, of course. He tried his best, but the Capellan was just too big of a nation for this tiny nation to uh, defend, I guess. So, you know, St. Ives was like, uh, you know, on its way to being reintegrated back into the uh, Confederation. And his family was basically put in charge of the uh, St. Ives uh, sector, I guess, St. Ives space. But, the, but then the uh, Federal of War happened. And the Chancellor allowed him to go fight for Victor. The Davions used this opportunity, I guess, and when he was fighting to, for, for Victor. He went, he went to fight for Victor. Uh, they used this opportunity to rescue him, I guess. To kidnap slash rescue him from the Capellans so that they can enlist him, I guess, in this uh, coming operation that they're gonna uh, do against the Capellans. But the Capellans then re-kidnapped him back to say this to 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 to, to Capellan space i guess back to saint ives <laughs> later on the uh, ccaf ordered him h h ordered his local military i guess the saint ives like a uh, military force there to retake a planet from the republic a planet that the capellans lost to the republic he refused the order and then defected to the sphere the republic sphere and as mentioned before, he later died in the Capellan Crusades, which now, which now brings us to Danai Lao Centrella, his great niece. Just like her forebears, she became a Solaris fighter, but she didn't. She 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 failed to become a champion. So she was placed into the CCAF by her father, Dao Shen Lao, where she joined the Second Big Mac unit. She had a pretty uh, eventful military career before being the Duchess of Castrovia which I must note is usually reserved for the heir of the Emerald Throne. So maybe when Daoshin kicks the dust, uh, Danai Lao Centrella will be the next chancellor. Hmm. Next, we have Fa Dre Singh, who was a Wolf's Dragoon mech warrior. During the Battle of Hoth, Singh got fed up with his command's indecisiveness and just went out on his own to destroy an Eridani Light Horse's supply depot. Other people of his unit followed him when he left and successfully completed this ad hoc mission. The unit was reprimanded and Singh later defected to the uh, DCMS. Up next is Lieutenant Ian Grimm, who had a pretty close one on one fight with a marauder during the Battle of uh, Menham. That's it. <laughs> next, we have Remus Pops Helventus. I don't know how to say that. He was Korean's only like test pilot since 3020 and is known for piloting every Centurion variant. He would occasionally be deployed as a uh, AFFS mech warrior like during the war of 3039. 
He later worked on the Legionary Mech. Then we have Captain Luke Traharn. He was part of the Kilbourne Periphery March Militia, where his unit would constantly be attacked by pirates and combined forces, leaving them under strength. Next is Tiamat Logan. Tiamat is the only child of Marisol Logan, sister of the uh, Grand Mistress of Lothian League, who was not all too happy with the current state between her nation and the Marian hegemony. Marisol would conduct raids into the Marian hegemony, but would later die during one. Tiamat would take over her mother's ragtag group of insurgents and continue the fight. Now we have Captain Anson McDaniel, who was a uh, AFF AFFS mech warrior who commands an all-jump capable unit. His efforts against the Smoke Jaguar forces on Verantofta would lead to the destruction of the 151st Garrison Cluster stationed on the planet. And finally, we have Serena Viper Woodrow, who was a Davion mech warrior. She and her unit shot to fame after combat footage of them during the battles on Port Arthur was released. Woodrow, though, was not particularly fond of the spotlight and gave the credit to another land's inner unit. You know, I was gonna put like a little segment before doing like this ending, I guess, this outro, I guess. But I realized that I kind of like sprinkled what I planned to do, what I planned to write, I guess, all throughout the video, I guess, especially in the uh, variants. Like during the D model, I said that the mech was almost replaced. And the 10D being like a low cost alternative to the Omni Centurion, which was, you know, being replaced, which was replacing all the Centurions, the so Centurions like 10s and 9s, I guess, in the FFS. So I guess I can in here, to be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Centurion. Yeah, there you go. That's the Centurion. It's only recently that I found a, a big blacking for this mech. You, you kind of start with one in Bell, in Bell type, the, 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 the uh, turn-based game, 2018 one, or 2016 one, one of those two. And you also start with one in Met Warrior 5, so, and it just kind of stuck with me, really. It's probably up there in terms of looks, I would say, so that helps. It looks cool. It's probably one of the cool-looking look cool looking mechs. At least cool-looking and medium mechs, I guess. I'm not gonna lie, dude, like, the older and classic depiction of it kind of looks a bit goofy. <laughs> it's kind of like a skinny-looking thing with, like, a fin just slapped on top but the modern look though that thing that that's a good looking mech <laughs> they really like nailed like the whole like antiquity like age helmet of the uh, the hat design you know I forgot what it's called the roman helmet it's not really roman is it it looks like a greek helmet but no the romans did wear something at that early uh in their earlier times i guess but whatever they're not here for roman history uh Listen, not that I'm good at it. <laughs> but yeah, I really, like I said just before, like I really want to try a Mech H2 campaign as a very, like a very poor unit or something. Just using an H-Line or any other like militia mech, I guess. But the H-Line definitely would be there. I just like building stuff up, man. I think it would be a fun little campaign. But I think I'm going on tangent as per usual. So yeah, the Centurion is definitely in my top 5 medium max right now, I guess. The uh, Vindicator being the first, then you get Gladiator, and then maybe you get this. <laughs> but yeah, tell me what you think about it, about the Centurion. Maybe you got a custom you like to share, you know? or a unit that uses Centurions that you have. A, a funny story, funny game, who knows, whatever. What it, whatever it is that you feel like you want to share, feel free to share. But that's been that. That's been me. You know, join the Discord if you want to hang with the community and chat with me and follow me on the Twitch. I stream every weekday playing games. Hey, hey, but I do multi streams, so you can still be here as well. You don't have to follow Twitch, but the stream will still go up here. <laughs> but yeah, tell everybody, take care, and see you next time.